Hey YouTubers, Alexi Adventures here again with another package video. So this is um, my third order to the same supplier in the uh, United States. And uh, we have some more Atari 8-bit goodness. And uh, I suppose because it's my third order and I've gone through most of their loose cartridges, they've actually sent um, an item I didn't order that I had on watch and I just wasn't sure which what the game was um, and was limiting myself to a budget, but they've sent me a bonus. So I'll do the bonus first. It's actually a copy of Final Legacy for Atari 8-bit from the XE era of cartridges, as far as the label's concerned. So I still left the cartridge on top, but with the silver label. I don't know anything about Final Legacy as a game. Um, and by the way, it's in a nice box. And then all the cartridges are here in a little container. So, I got Q-Bird. It's one of my favourite games. A great classic arcade game, Galaxian. And pole position. A little dirty there, but that should clean up, I reckon. Um, the original Space Invaders. Uh, I've got the Super Space Invaders, the, the extended, or extended one, but not the original Space Invaders. Uh, which isn't exactly like the arcade game, which is why I think they came out with the other version. Uh, Piker Brothers Frogger. And last but not least, and the very one I'm looking forward to playing on this version, Pitfall. Can't remember the individual prices. Um, no, they're not on there. I think the most expensive one out of that lot were Pitfall and Cubit. But they weren't too bad in general. And we've got a few manuals with it as well. So we've got the manual for pole position. Uh, whoops, Frogger. They're all in really good nick. Galaxian. Cubit. And space invaders so we've got manuals for just about all of them so a really good lot from the same seller um, they've been very good to me I've gone through most of the single titles they do have a few box ones left uh, but I'm gonna have to save up a bit more before I think about ordering anymore all right we'll go and have a great gameplay session of those titles here we go with Galaxian on Atari 8 bit It's quite a colourful, good version of the game. Now... Oops! Oh. It does have a couple of audio bugs in it, as we hear there. All versions of the game are like that. I have actually played test or demoed this one before. Uh, but I thought I'd include it in for collision this lot, because technically I actually got this one first. This is one lot where I recorded the pickup and the um, original play testing for the um, you know the play part of the demo got lost. So it's not an easy game. I mean, you only get the one shot on the screen at the same time at the one time. So you've got to ah, and they can change direction quite randomly, and it's getting used to the um, rate of the bullet. Yeah, you finally got one. Um, and it is better shooting them when they're coming down because you get more points. And of course, shooting the um, one of the yellow ones when he's coming down with his squad mates nets you the most points. Ooh, that was close. Ow, missed again. So, I'm not sure whether you could call the centipedes good. They're quite different. I mean, at least it does have a bit of background sound happening, which gives you a bit more feel of the game. I'm just going to sit up there by the looks of it. There we go, I've got a bonus one. And then you move on, and you get an extra flag. And then they start attacking a bit quicker. 
So, it's not a bad version and port of Galaxian. Oh, and I die. Alright, we'll move on to the next one. Here's Cupid. It's quite colourful. It doesn't have the um, intro sequence where it explains how many times you've got to hop on the tile, but you do have the blinking change to over there, which is the same as like in the arcade game. And the um, you know, top score area and everything are there and quite colourful and detailed. It's quite fast moving and it seems to be reasonably easy to jump in the direction you would like to go, which can be difficult on the Coleco version, um, because of, mainly because of the controller. It does have an awfully long pause when you jump on the disc up the top of the screen. But it's got, you know, the little intermission sequences which make it fun. I mean, it does look, or just how it's been programmed, that the Atari has a little difficulty doing a few different types of sound at once. I mean, because you've got the sound of me jumping around there. But now you've got the bouncing thing. If I jump at the same time, it seems to delay some of the sound effects. But the game looks quite colourful. The colours aren't quite as vibrant as the Coleco one, uh, mainly because the Atari 8 bits um, colour sets a lot darker. Now, this is the colour tones they chose. So, round three, we still only have to jump on one tile at a time. Except we now have the added octopus thingies that go along the, the bottom and get in the way. Is there a long delay again? Now each disc you don't use on a level you get bonus points for. Okay, that's an extra man. I'll just get to the stage where we've got to jump onto on on the squares more than once. It's actually quite a nice playing version of Cuba. This is a game that I've always liked as an arcade game. And this is, you know, a home version that you'd be very pleased with. So if you are a Cubo fan, so now, and this is our next stage, so level two. Yep, level two, round one. So now, notice we've got to change it to green, and to do that we would need to jump on each square twice. This makes it a lot more difficult. And we have the, oops, oh there we go, and there's a square when we die. And we have the nuisance that comes along and changes the squares back. Bane of every Cubert player's existence. Got him. So the game starts getting harder and more complicated. Right, um, I'm actually quite good at Cubert, so I could probably play this for ages. So rather than this video go on forever, we shall let Cubert send us out and we'll go on to the next game. Here we go with Space Invaders. Atari 8 bit. Now this is the Space Invaders that came out at the same time as the machine came out and was actually bundled with uh, some of the machines. Now the Invaders actually come out quite quickly. You can hold the button down and it keeps firing. Of course you're only allowed one button. One, um, ooh, there we go. Um, one bullet on the screen at once. We got a UFO across the top, so intrinsically, it's fairly bog standard Space Invaders. It does have a few different game modes. Let's get rid of these guys to sort of get on straight speed, and that's got a few, you know, graphical effects when you shoot things, and the aliens are different shapes.
You notice how the sound's getting louder and more ominous as it gets closer. Right, okay, so the ship moves down and we move a bit closer and we get a bit harder. What I might try is just another game mode. see what the difference is. So this is game two. Doesn't seem to be a lot of difference so far. Interestingly notice we don't have any defence either, which is usually in uh, most versions of Space Invaders. Also notice the scoring level is quite low, you don't get much score. Don't seem to be getting any UFOs at the moment. There's going to be a lot of difference, but anyway, I'll have to muck around with the game modes and figure out um, what things, but I believe there's a couple of different ways you can play the game, and obviously you can play it one or two players too. Here we go with pole position. Now, it's automatic acceleration, and then you press down to go into high, and the button is the brake. So our first lap is our qualifying. I mean, it doesn't look too bad graphically. It's actually, you know, especially for Ontario, big game, reasonably colourful and bright. It's like put no signs right around the end of those corners. And crashing on your qualifying lap is definitely a bad idea. In pole position. Okay. So, based on our time. Oh, I got pole position. Interesting. <laughs> Quite a good bonus, alright. And then we go into the race rock where I am in pole position. Interesting. Doing better than I normally would. Okay, I'll just do a little bit of the race because the full race is four laps. Interesting enough, I've started ahead of everybody, but there's still cars, so it doesn't realistically depict where all your opponents are on the track, which is like the arcade game in that respect. So, accurate Formula One simulator, pole position is not. It's purely an arcade racing game and good fun. See if I can do a lap without killing myself. So your time's ticking away. Oh, where am I supposed to get through there? Okay, so we've got extended play. So that's what you've got to do each lap. You've got to get round before the time it gets down, you get slightly less time each lap. And crash and you lose a lot of time. 
Alright, well, great version of the game, we'll move on. Here we go with Frogger. Uh, multiple attempts at recording this. Oops, ah, missed. Sorry, as you can see, it's quite whoops, a fast version of Frogger. And it also has quite a few of the you know, features of the arcade game, which includes your female frog companion there. A bit of bonus if you manage to get that female companion home. And there was a fly up there. Right, let's see if we can flip that one. And go. And we get some introductory music and we get some more cars. One of the logs has changed into a crocodile. Okay, game. Okay. Highly recommend it. Alright, let's try the next game. Right, here we go with Pitfall. As you can see, it's um, very similar looking, but to the Atari 2600 version, showing how good a job they did on the Atari 2600. It's just got oops, a few more colours, a bit more use of you know, multiple colours just to give things shade. The, uh, Sound effects are fairly ordinary. Standing on his ice, I'm safe. Oh, I'm terrible at jumping over the crocodiles, I tell you now. <laughs> and I've killed myself. That was one of the worst demonstrations of Pitfall you will ever see in your life. But as you can see, it's quite a nice version, lots of colour, use of colour, just a little bit more complicated. Exactly the same map as the 2600, so if you know the map. Um, and a very good game, so just I'm not particularly good at demonstrating it today. Alright, uh, one more game, which is a bonus one. Okay, final Legacy. For some reason you can select whether you're left or right handed. Now, I have had a game of this before because this gameplay has taken a couple of goes to do. So we go to our map view. Now, I'm still not sure about what these particular ones are yet. Well, we'll give it a go. Uh, okay, it doesn't seem to be anything there. We don't seem to be... No. Yes, I'm still not sure what those large ones are, like large cities. Now, if we go and in range of a white dot, we are now fighting an um, enemy ship. Oops, here comes his missile. We've got to avoid the missiles. There we go, miss me. Um, Right, so you've got to go, so they're patrolling, see they're patrolling along the thing, you've got to try and go to the... Oh, here we go. Got... They missed me. Um... Oops, ran into him. Oops, caused us a bit of damage, but we got rid of him in the end. Okay, you go in range of a base and then you have this certain amount of time to go and get rid of the 
the lane facilities. a certain amount of fuel to um, you need to make sure you get into this view as quickly as possible. See, they're launching missiles so that have now gone and attacked my cities over there, so I've lost a city. Great. games where I'm probably going to have to you know, look it up look up a manual I do that, I seem to lose a city. <laughs> need to figure out the nuances a little bit further in, the, in, in some of the days, so... So, yeah, highly recommended for the Atari 8-bit lovers out there. These are going to keep going because I haven't knocked out the place where they're coming from. Hmm, I actually quite like this game. Alright, thank you very much for watching my pickup play, and I'll catch you next time.